Welcome to Ballar Otherworld. We're in Craganown. This is a very secretive place in the west of Ireland. Craganown Castle has this very mysterious past. It was attacked by Cromwell. There are stories of McNamara clans ruling here secretly for many generations before being taken over by Tom Steele. He's this eccentric character in Ireland. We are then going to look at John Hunt. He's been instrumental in preserving Irish history, heritage, culture. He is also the man responsible for this over here. Come on with me, quick, what are you doing? Over here we have the reconstruction of a cran oak. These were ancient dwellings. We're going to get you covering that. We're going to talk about the ring forts and the tunnels up above. We have so much, so what are we waiting for? Let's go! stepping onto one of the bridges to Cranog. These are man-made bridges and they had some great defences. As you can see they can be very difficult to see from the mainland. They were kind of sitting into the lake, shallow areas or in rivers and they actually would have often used stepping stones that were hidden under a couple of inches of water. As you can see down here you'd have had these secret stepping stones across. So if you didn't know, if you weren't familiar with the access points you'd easily find yourself arse down in the water and disaster if you're attacking because you had arrows raining down upon you for the entirety of your attack so they were very excellent defense and very easily constructed by the small communities in Ireland. So this is actually a reconstruction of a cran oak. You'll see behind us that there is a bridge here leading us to the lake. These bridges were actually to man-made islands on rivers and in some cases on coastal areas, would you believe? And they dotted all across Ireland from the 5th century right up until the 17th century they were lived in. It's amazing that these places, once they had grown up the uh, shrubbery around the outside here, outside the lake, it was a kind of protection. It was very easy to disguise them. Only for smoke from the fire would you know that there was any settlement here at all. These served as excellent community hubs for people for centuries all across Ireland and John Hunt had the foresight to actually construct one here and give us a full exposure to what it was like to live as the people did in Celtic times. But our beautiful little friend here Careful buddy he comes from a Fulloch Fia. Whoops. So this fella has made his little home here in Craig and Owen. We're gonna just pop him back down now. So over here, we're gonna just make sure he doesn't fall. We're gonna see that he gets back to where his family are. Come on, angel, buddy. Come on, there he goes. So we're in standing inside of a Fulloch Fia. What is a Fulloch Fia? This was how people cooked their food years and years ago in Ireland. Very simple. We have a little bit of a ring fort here, kind of. You had this big pit that was dug up. And what you did then was you gathered up your firewood nearby and you lit a huge intense fire. You needed to get that boy piping hot. And then what you'd do is you'd place your stones inside and you'd wait till those stones were red hot. Now at the same time, that pit had to be filled with water. They were usually lined in such a way that water would filter in without getting too dirty. Then they would wrap, they would use animal hides and cloths to wrap the meat, huge chunks of meat, and they would basically dip them into the water after it was boiling. Piping hot stones would be rolled into the water and they would boil the water so the water was bubbling up. Then you could drop your meat in and cook it. So who wants to try it? One of the great things about Craganown is the ring fort here. We have an amazing reconstruction and it tells you a lot about ancient Ireland, how the Celts lived in this place. This is one of those ring forts that we're telling you about. Imagine the excitement and the adventure living in a place like this. I'm 
to show you one particular piece and that is the tunnel, the secret escape tunnel. This is actually a secret way out of the ring fort in case of invasion. In case of attack, they had these secret little passages dug inside of their homes where you would lift a trap door and you would escape out into the wilderness around and to freedom. So come on and we'll tell you a bit about it. There is a house, manor house, that was on the next hill over called Cullan House and this house has a story of an ancient tunnel that Hunt possibly covered up himself. The tunnel is supposed to lead directly from the manor house all the way to Craganone Castle. We haven't yet been able to find it but this is a reconstruction based on that design but it would have to be far far longer. This is a little enclosure which they would have used to save their supplies in the event of any attacks or any famines or any other misfortunes with their harvests that would befall them. And if we move backwards we're going to really feel the space, feel how enclosed it is and how secret of these locations these escape routes had to be in order to be effective to save the lives, the very lives of the people. Splashing in the puddles, feeling the rain dripping down from the stones above us. We can just feel it. It's the enclosure and there have been times where these were the important locations to escape from dark forces from the other world. There's a lot of dark tales about these places and we won't go up yet to the ring fort, but you'll see here that this is how they covered it up. Come here. This is the path. This is what they used to escape and to conceal their exit. This here is the great rock, Craganone. It translates loosely to Owen's little rocky hill. The castle was built in 1550 by John McNamara. And he was a descendant of the McNamara who built Napogue Castle in this same area. They were loyal friends and allies of the O'Briens. And they served them well in their many battles against Vikings and Normans and all kinds of encroachers on their lands. They had a very strong presence here in East Clare in particular. As you can see, it is a very impressive structure rising up on a hill overlooking the areas around. While the main tower house is quite small, you actually have an awful lot of hidden little details beneath, including the windows here, this tower structure that remains unexplored, and even in the basement or cellar beneath the castle, you'll see it here. The castle was owned by the McNamaras for a century, but sadly, it was taken by Cromwell and his forces and when it was confiscated the roof, the battlements and the staircase were all ripped from it and destroyed so that all we were left with was a ruin of a castle, a memory for the Irish people. to talk about Tom Steele. He is the man who in 1821 inherited not only Craganone but Cullan Manor and the estates surrounding the area from his uncle. When he received this he thought this is my chance because he was deeply in love with a lady from Ennis, from Ashfield House in the centre of Ennis. His love for her led him to invest huge portion of his fortune, renovating the ruin at Craganone. He wanted to have this beautiful castle and fairy tale dream where they would live together and spend their lives. So in his efforts to seduce her, what he did was he would get out and stand on a rock. He would wait out on a rock on the River Fergus, looking out at her as she combed her hair in her window. Now she knew what he was doing and she never acknowledged him for it. And he did this for many, many months and eventually she did reject him. This devastated our poor hero. 
and while his love led to the restoration of this castle, it led to emotional ruin for poor Tom Steele. What did poor Tom Steele do next? So he'd lost this great love of his life. He did a few peculiar things. The first thing he did was he wrote a letter to the Pope, Pope Pius VII, and he told him that he should become a Protestant. Now, obviously that story dies there and then, but the next thing he did was far more ambitious because he mortgaged out these lands outside this window and all around us. He mortgaged them out for £10,000. And when he had that money, he set forth to Spain and he joined in several battles that were taking place on that Iberian Peninsula at the time. Miraculously, he survived. And when he returned to Ireland, he was reinvigorated with this drive to become involved in politics. And it fed his deep relationship with one of Ireland's most famous politicians, Daniel O'Connell. He never forgot his dear love and he never gave up hope that she would come to her senses and stay with him in this castle. But tragically that never happened and the castle slowly, slowly but surely, it fell to the river. And the last person to sit here before it was sold off again was poor, poor Tom Steele. Want to talk a bit about the pagan element and the more mythological element of Tom Steele's life and this is stuff by the way this is stuff that you won't find anywhere else so be sure to follow us and let us know what you think because this story is fascinating Burr in County Offaly is known as the centre of Ireland geographically speaking there's a good argument to make that it is and there is a dolmen in that location it was recognized by some as the center of ireland and possibly a gateway to the fifth province there was all these legends about a fifth province the largest in ireland and how it was fallen into the other world during a great battle in the past the stone on the portal dolmen was actually taken by tom Steele. now this is a reconstruction unfortunately because the actual stone has been missing for over a century at this point he had it taken when his dear friend Daniel O'Connell was giving a speech a rousing political speech in Burr he used it as a diversion and he called some workers and he had them transport this enormous stone down to Craganown and then on to Culane and when it was in Culane it was at his manor house where he had two oratories, one for Catholics and one for Protestants. The Catholic one was so that his friend Daniel O'Connell could have mass any time he wished when he was passing by. So this man used this stone, this ancient pagan sacred stone, as the altar for the oratory in his house. It did move after that. We're still researching to find out where it's gone. Some say that it ended up in the Pogue for a time. I've seen those records. But it did disappear again once more after Tom Steele's death. And it remains a mystery to this day where it is. What dark secrets lie in its past and in its history. Now we have a very tragic end to the very exciting life of Tom Steele. He died very shortly after Daniel O'Connell. When Daniel O'Connell died in 1847, it was a death blow to poor Tom. Poor honest Tom was in Dublin when he decided to throw himself into the river. A passerby saved him and he died a few weeks later from his injuries. His estates were divided up. His niece, Marie Studdard, inherited this land. She had married Charles Studdard of Newmarket House. And their family, the Studdards, continued to have ownership of this castle and the lands around it for several years, all the way up until the 1950s. And it is then when we are 
blessed with the arrival of none other than John Hunt, who would resurrect Irish folklore and culture and history. Such a remarkable person, and we've got to talk about him next. John Hunt was an extraordinary man. His contribution to the preservation of Irish mythology and heritage and history cannot be overstated. He is the man you need to thank for Bunratty Castle, for Loch Gur, these places we've already featured in our videos and many more which we will feature in the future. He resurrected this ruin of a castle through these woods in Craganone and he didn't just stop there. He didn't just restore the castle. He didn't just use it as the original Hunt Museum. He actually built a Cranog to simulate one that was six kilometers away from here. He simulates a ring fort and he brought back these standing stones and dolmen and there is a wedge tomb in these woods that is 4,000 years old. It is one of the only wedge tombs in the world that is undisturbed. And the archeologists who have visited this site are really afraid of disturbing it because it is such a rare find to have such undisturbed ancient artifacts all around us. Craigan Owen, you'll hear that there aren't many tales, legends or myths around it, but we do have one interesting little detail. A few hundred years ago, when it was supposed to be abandoned, there is reports that there was a king here, a McNamara chieftain, and he had a settlement here. Now, he ran into some difficulties because his grain was being eaten. They needed to find out who was doing it. So they discovered that it was actually happening at night. So he tasked his men with finding out who was doing it. They discovered it was actually a mare and foal which were rising out of the lake nearby and running through the fields at night, devouring all of the food they could find. So his men were sent to lay a trap at night and they waited for them to return. They did emerge from the lake once more. McNamara and his men were waiting and they caught it. They caught the foal. They didn't catch the mare and she disappeared back beneath the lake. He trained the foal and that foal became the greatest horse in Ireland at the time. And it was his great pride to ride it around the grounds around this lake. In one of these journeys, the mare emerged and burst forth from the lake and landed on the path before them. And the foal, missing his mother, of course he did, dived back after her as she returned to the lake, with McNamara still strapped to him. And McNamara was never seen again. We have heard reports from old men from Kilkishan that when they've walked the edge of the lake or they have been on their boats fishing, they have seen a man underneath the surface of the water riding a horse. Many believe that could be the McNamara of the state. This mysterious lord who vanished from history. Oh, as many lakes in Ireland, as many stories have emerged, it is because of the connection to the other world. And we will be diving in, not just to the lake, but into the history and the lore surrounding ancient Ireland. So join us on the journey and follow for more of our adventures.